Welcome to video number 15. Uh, this video is a special video for students that have just done their C3 uh, 2013 June exam. Uh, this exam caused an uproar almost instantly. Um, Twitter went nuts, hashtag C3. You can have a look at some of the posts that are on there. Some of them are actually quite funny. Um, I won't endorse the language used on other ones, but um, have a look for yourself. And also BBC News has even picked up um, on the kind of anger and, and the emails that have been thrown around about how awkward this paper was. Now unfortunately for Edexcel, this wasn't a standard paper um, because it was a substitute paper. There's loads of students have, have jumped to, perhaps jumped to conclusions um, about the difficulty and why this paper was difficult. and and that's kind of exacerbated the situation a little. What I will say is LXL have very clearly said that no students will be advantaged or disadvantaged um, and they will look at the, the grey boundaries if necessary as, as they actually do every year. Okay, so um, hopefully that's that's a little bit reassuring to, to some of our students that sat C3. I do think that the paper was written in a very different style um, and uh, the question I'm going to look at in particular had a bunch of elements that were slightly unusual um, which I know could have thrown off students but actually as I go through it hopefully you'll recognise that the maths involved in it was similar to, to other papers and actually for, for a question 8 on a paper like this the maths turned out fairly reasonable. Um, but I do understand why students might have read it and, and been confused. So a couple of things I want to mention about the paper. Um, firstly, question eight in particular. Loads of students said, why, there's, why is there mechanics in the paper? Um, firstly, it's, it's not a mechanics question. Uh, I realise there's, there's an element of mechanics style vector question uh, within this one. But they, they steer you away from that by giving you the equation that you need. Um, in fact they ask you to assume a particular equation which saves that kind of mechanics process. Um, but earlier in the paper there was also uh, another question that caused confusion about um, a TAN uh, equation. Now, actually that equation um, used a lot of results that if you studied M1 or M2 you would have used quite a lot so I think there actually is an advantage on this particular C3 paper for you have um, having exposure to mechanics or M1 or M2 um, but I certainly uh, don't think that would have given you any significant advantage and it certainly isn't directly to do with question 8. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the, the question, uh, talk you through it and add in a, a few extra bits as to why I actually think that this is a pretty good question. Um, math mathematically and from a teacher's perspective, it's a very nice question. So we'll go through that now. On the board is a diagram that is given to you in the question. What I am doing is adding on a couple of uh, points and, and labeling a couple more sides so that I can show you why this question works and why actually um, this question turns out to be very nice. Um, actually, to some extent, quite impressed with the the person that wrote the exam question here. Um, it makes such a change from the normal question where you're asked, what's the temperature inside a warehouse or um, how to model the height of sea level using sine and cosine added together. Um, this, this just turns out to be a little bit different and a bit more realistic. I do realise I just said realistic and, and the idea of working out some C3 trigonometry just so you can walk across the road and take a picture instantaneously turning around and getting your camera ready uh, seems a bit ridiculous in itself. My advice to you though if you are taking a picture of someone running a marathon, if you cross the road earlier give yourself plenty of time uh, it might be a bit more sensible. And it saves you having to take your FX85 GT with you. For those of you that were wondering why on earth did the question tell you about John Speed, uh, this is why. Um, examiners don't like you to have questions that don't work out properly. Um, if you're doing them from scratch, they, they like everything to tie together, even though the situation's a bit hypothetical.
So that, that first part in black on the board wasn't part of the question, wasn't required, and I wouldn't suggest doing it in your exam unless you end up with plenty of time spare and you feel like doing a bit of extra maths. Now this is frustrating uh, for many students. Um, it's just a very straightforward uh, question asking you to do an R cos theta minus alpha expansion and find the value of R and theta, theta well not theta in this case, but R and alpha, and then following on from that later you'll find theta. Um, the most frustrating thing is everything in the question up to the letter A, uh, which was half the page, was completely irrelevant. At this point I realise I should get my calculator, because I'm going to have to do a tan inverse function in a moment, or something equivalent. Um, I've opted for my 83ES uh, for this one. Uh, it's not that disadvantage on the 83 GT. Uh, the only real use of the 83 GT or the 85 GT that I've found over the 83 ES is um, expressing things in prime factor form. Although I wonder how many GCSE maths teachers have told their students how to do that. Because that can get them some nice easy marks on their GCSE papers. Especially uh, GCSE foundation paper. Anyway, uh, pondering aside, Part B says, find the minimum value of V. Now this is slightly different to normal, um, mostly because the denominator is the trigonometric uh, term that I've worked out above. And if I want to find the minimum value of me, V, that means that the denominator must be as large as possible. In this case, it must be 25, because the maximum value of cosine, regardless of the term inside the cosine function, uh, is, is 1. I'm not too keen on how the question now asks you to use an answer that you worked out in part B, which relied on an answer you worked out for part A. There are a few steps here that relied on you getting the first bit right. Um, however, because those first two bits are quite trivial, and it is a later question in the paper, I do think that is, is quite fair. So you should get quite quickly that theta is 73.74, and um, subbing that in, uh, to y is 7 over sine theta as I've labelled it in the diagram and um, just by using sine is opposite over hypotenuse that turns out quite quick to be 7.29 metres and again because this is contextualised actually gives you an opportunity to think whether it's realistic or not Part D then gives you a bit of a break if you have um, made a mistake maybe in um, part B or part C then part D gives you a fresh start and it says given that the speed is 1.68 so essentially that gives us a value we can put into our equation for V so I'm looking for the equation 1.68 equals 21 divided by and then my answer from part A uh, a quick rearrangement of this which I did wrong, so you can all have a little chuckle at your maths teacher at this point for a moment. Um, I quickly spotted that I did it wrong when I typed it in the calculator and got an answer that I thought uh, was ridiculous. I quickly realised my mistake. Some of you might have spotted it already. I ended up with, with a reciprocal of, of what I actually wanted for the value on the right-hand side. But at this point, I'm looking at what the two possible values could be. I've drawn my cosine graph. Now, you can get an infinite number of solutions from a cosine graph um, thinking carefully about the domain that I want um, for my function I decided to go for the negative 60 and the positive 60 if you're in any doubt in your exam what two solutions would give you the answers you want always take a take one more why not or a couple more um, and then at the end just look at the the range of answers that you want and just put a line through ones that fall outside that range but this did give me my answers, and 13.74 and 133.74. So if you've made it through uh, my description of that question, the chances are you have done C3 or you're a C3 student and working quite well. And so I have a C3 a uh, question for you. This this question looks quite simple, um, but don't be fooled. This is this is a, a definitely a C three question. Uh, uses some quite clever trigonometric um, identities uh, to solve it, and here it is. 
we've got a right angle triangle, ABC, um, and there's two other points labelled on the triangle, E and D. Uh, all I'm going to tell you is that A to E is 9, C to D is 8 root 2, and that the point D on this line uh, forms, when joined to C, forms a line that bisects the angle at C. So the angle D to C to A is the same size as the angle B to C to D. Okay. Um, and your challenge is to see if you can find the length of the line AC. Okay, difficult problem this time, so good luck.